My name is John Schmidt. I'm Associate Dean of the Graduate School. With me is John Chambers, who's Director of Administration for the Graduate School. He and I have had the privilege to work with uh, a faculty special task force on the development of electronic theses and dissertations, and then to do the uh, implementation procedures, not only at our website, but also at ProQuest and all of the other things that have to be done to implement electronic theses and dissertations, and we're really excited about it. As of this morning, 50 ETDs have been submitted already, <laughs> and we went live February 26th. So things are running smoothly, knock on wood, and um, hopefully we can, uh, in the time that we have, do, t do three things with you. First, I want to give you just a very brief uh, overview of selected things having to do with submitting electronic theses and dissertations. Then second, John Chambers will do a demo in which he uploads a document to the ProQuest website. And then we'll have time at the end uh, to respond to any questions that you might have. So I will move quickly. As you know, <clears throat> excuse me, electronic theses and dissertations are available at the Graduate School's homepage with a button cleverly titled, Electronic Theses and Dissertations. And our goal in preparing this website was to keep it as simple as we possibly could. Most of us don't like going to websites in which you have to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll through 20 screens to find that one little nugget of information that you need on a particular topic. So we've tried to keep it so that the longest section is the introduction section, and that's only about five or six screens. Other sections are, are much shorter than that, and um, we've gotten real good feedback from several students that we had tested uh, before and during the time that we were going uh, live with electronic theses and dissertations. The process involves two websites, primarily. There's the graduate school's website, which you're seeing now, with just a few topics, really. And then the ProQuest website, where a student goes, once he or she has become familiar with the information here, the student goes there to do the actual uh, submission with a PDF file. The third website, of course, later on, is the UA Libraries website, which will uh, be responsible for, the, for access to electronic theses and dissertations and long-term uh, archiving of those. So it's those three uh, working together. We've had a very good working relationship and uh, with UA Libraries, they've been extremely helpful in, in the process. What about optional versus required? ETDs are optional between now and August 15 of this year. Starting August 15, it will be required that a student submit the thesis or dissertation electronically. The steps are pretty straightforward. You do all of the normal things that people for years have been doing with their theses and dissertations, working closely with the departments and so forth. I'm not going to go into the details of that. That's a different seminar. Today we're focusing only on the electronic submission process. Once it's completed and defended, the student converts the document that has been successfully defended to PDF file. There may be some additional files if, if needed. Obviously one of the advantages is that you can upload music files and other types of files that obviously can't be done in, a, uh, in the old paper format. And you upload those to the ProQuest site. Immediately you get an email from ProQuest saying that it has been uh, submitted. And on our website, you already will have seen that within seven to, days, you, seven to 10 days, you'll get a response from us indicating one of two things. Everything is fine, it's been accepted, it's finished, or there are some changes that are needed and there will be a content box in which we include the changes that you need to make before resubmitting. And of course, one of the major advantages is the resubmission process is simply going to the original, say, Word file, which most people will be doing, making those changes, converting it to PDF again, and uploading it again for no additional cost. That's that second time. And 
there are no boxes of the expensive paper to find and then purchase. There's no printing out with lots of printer ink of all of those. And then knowing that once you submit those two originals to the graduate school, if there are any changes, you have to do another two, all that's, all that's gone. Um, I know the, the one of the students that we worked with initially, we just stood o looking over her shoulder as she submitted and she got to the end within 17 minutes and she looked at it and said, well, I think I'm finished. And I said, well, obviously we have to check it. Well, oh, it's already on the other computer. Here, let's go take a look. And um, within five minutes, we had checked it. We had made the changes. We had told her any changes that needed to be done. Finished. So in fact, in her case, there, there weren't any changes that were needed. Has that speaker gone out? That would explain it. Thank you. <laughs> now let's try this. That works a little better. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we're notified to do the final check, and then we notify you by email, whether it's perfectly okay or whether there are some, uh, some changes that are needed. Now, a comment about the PDF conversion process. Most everyone knows how, how to do this and, and has been doing it uh, for, for quite some time. But there are two different ways that one can do this. You can do the PDF conversion yourself, or while you're at the ProQuest site, you can upload your Word or other files, and they will do the conversion for you. We've done this several times, and typically within 15 to 18 minutes, you get an email from ProQuest that says your PDF file converted by ProQuest, approved by ProQuest, not the content or anything, but just that it's an acceptable PDF, uh, is attached. And so that's a very easy way to do that. You literally can do one-stop shopping at the ProQuest website. There are, there are two main forms that are, that are uh, being used in, in the process. Those of you who've been working on a thesis or dissertation for a little while know about the signature page. Well, there's a new one. We're not calling it the signature page anymore. It's the committee acceptance page. And I'm not going to go and, and sh to our uh, website and show you that particular one. But it's essentially like the old signature page. You get the signatures of all of the committee members. But there's also a part at the bottom that with a brief paragraph by which your advisor says, I've looked at this and the PDF, I took a quick look at the PDF and what's there is essentially what this student did defend. There haven't been really any you know, major content changes or, or you know, there are, haven't been, I've looked at it, at least eyeballed it, and there aren't any major problems with the PDF conversion. And it's ready uh, both in content and form and style to go ahead and upload as far as I, the advisor, am concerned. And so uh, there's, just, there's that form. And then there's a, a publication agreement, which John will probably talk about during the part of uh, the presentation that he does on the, uh, on the demonstration. Something that's new that we think you'll find very helpful at our website, the Graduate School's website, uh, has to do with templates. We now have a Microsoft Word template. Again, I won't take the time to go and show you that right now. There's a Microsoft Word template for the front pages and showing you, and, and with the, uh, the page numbering and so forth. So you just pull that up and you Fill in the blanks, change the other person's name to yours, be sure that the years match on the title page and the next page, and we, the first one we got did not. They had, they had years that were, that were different. One said 2009, the other said, then went ahead and said 2008. So, um, but then also the page numbering, I think we'll, you will find things like that will be a lot easier because in the old paper version, you would put page one, would be the first page of chapter one down at the bottom center, and then you'd start switching to the top right. That's kind of a pain in the neck. So we just said, let's just forget about that. Let's just do bottom center, chapter one, page one, letter rip throughout the document. It sounds like a little thing, but it makes it a whole lot easier. We had talked with students about the paper process, and they had, some of them were doing eight or 10 or 12 different files because they just sort of found it more convenient that way than to, even though we had a template on our web page, I have to say, in our defense, uh, they were finding it easier to do it that way and just keep 
printing out each of those files separately. So you should have no trouble uh, getting it into PDF. This will facilitate that process for you significantly. Uh, I wanted to talk about binding just for a minute. There are two binding options. One, you can print it all out yourself, however copies you want to have bound, and take it to Tuscaloosa Bindery, as students have been doing for many, many years. Uh, that can be uh, not so uh, environmentally friendly if you're then having to go get some you know, pretty good paper and do that and it's kind of an inconvenience or again uh, to, to do the one-stop shopping approach when you're at the ProQuest site you can just click on the options to have it bound and I don't want to do a ProQuest commercial but they really make it easier for you because while you're there you can choose the traditional eight and a half by eleven binding with the black cover and the gold letters on the black spine that we're all familiar with over many years. Or you can uh, do paperback binding. You also can do booklet-sized binding, much smaller, double-sided, whatever you want. If you want a work copy for your, uh, for your office and it doesn't have to be a more expensive <coughs> bound copy, that's just fine. That also helps you accommodate exactly what your department wants because we don't dictate anything having to do with binding in the graduate school. That's a, that's a local issue. And uh, most committee chairs, for example, will say, with all the time that I've spent, please give me a very nice <laughs> bound, hard bound copy for this. But any copies you want for yourself, just you can make them paperback, however you want to do that. And you can just click those options and it's finished and probably will be done faster, uh, at least what we're seeing so far uh, on most occasions, doing that from ProQuest than by taking it to Tuscaloosa Bindery. I don't want to say anything negative about Tuscaloosa Bindery. We've obviously had wonderful success with them. They're a great option for you, but it does involve printing out multiple copies of the dissertation or thesis yourself. Now, let me turn it over to John Chambers, who will switch to the ProQuest site, which you access by hitting ProQuest Submission at the bottom of our website, and he will give you some of the basics about uh, submission.